Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited to be talking to you about a very, very important topic. And that is understanding the limited slip differential. And I've got to admit, I did an earlier video about where I combined a Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner and a uh, chassis tutorial about what to tune on the LSD and how to use it. But at, and also to chapter seven of my book, The Dynamics of the Race Car, is all dedicated to differentials. But the purpose of this video is really to delve a bit more into the why of why the differential does what it does. So without further ado, let's look into it. Okay, I really want to start with this quote. And the reason I want to start with this quote is that this really underscores that of all the setup variables that you'll play with, without a shadow of a doubt, the most looked over is the diff. And indeed, to quote the late Carol Smith in one of his books, he had an F1 designer who once said, we have so much downforce that the diff is now irrelevant. And the subtitle was F1 designer who never won a race. And I think one of the things about when we take a look at all of the hit list of what we do as vehicle dynamics engineers, as race engineers, as performance engineers, the big thing that we will often overlook is the diff. And it's such an important variable. And on this one, hands in the air, folks, guilty as charged. And it really took a number of colleagues to really beat this um, into me. But you know what? Part of the tragedy of life is that you tend to learn a hell of a lot more through um, your screw-ups and your successes. So here we are. Okay, so as we discussed, the differential is a forgotten but very important setup variable. And one of the, and indeed, as I alluded to before, one of the most intra, uh, one of the most important tutorials I did was how to tune it. But I kind of, when I did that, I was all focusing on what would happen as you got up to the limits of traction, never beyond what would happen is when you would break traction. And it was it was a bit of an oversight that I did in that tutorial. And what I wanna focus on in this tutorial is I want to take a step back and really give you the why of why the LSD does what it was, sorry, does what it does. And so consequently, we're gonna start with a discussion on the lock diff because you have to actually understand the lock diff before you move on to um, the LSD. And once we talk about the LSD, I'll give you some really interesting things that I did when I did a deep dive into um, uh, the LSD, motivated by a lot of the driver and the loop work that I was doing. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's the challenge posed by diff. If we take a look at our, if we take a look at the challenge posed by cornering, because of the fact that, um, and I'll just grab my training aid here, and so um, here's our training aid. So when we are uh, uh, when we are uh, moving forward and maneuvering, and as we yaw through a um, particular corner, whether it be left or right, the challenge is that the outside wheel is moving faster than the inside wheel. That's just the nature of the fact that we've based uh, is the fact that you've got uh, is the fact that you've got an axle separated. Uh, so here's a center line, and you've got an axle here. That's just the uh, that's just the nature of it. So plus you throw in load transfer, then all of a sudden things start to get real messy real quick. The other thing that you also have to understand about the differential line made this point in my book, The Dynamics of the Race Car. The diff was never designed; it just happened. And once you understand that, making sense of the differential becomes a lot more straightforward. So first things first, in order to understand the, uh, the limited slip differential, we've got to take back, we've got to take a step back and understand the locked diff. Now that may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but bear with me for, for a minute. So what we have with the locked diff is that uh, when the diff is locked, both the inside and the outside wheel are fixed at the same velo uh, are fixed at the same rotational velocity. So we really have a tail of two compete. Uh, we really have a tail of two competing things here. So before we break traction, you're dealing with understeer city. 
Now, this uh, um, figure from uh, my book, The Dynamics of the Race Car, I go through this and I talk about this in depth. And in particular, I'll talk about things like the critical locking ratio, et cetera, et cetera. But before we break traction, what is happening is that the slip ratio on the inside wheel is going to be larger than the slip ratio on the outside wheel. And when we are at, before we break traction, and particularly when we are at um, low load transfers, it's understeer city. So that is pretty much what we're dealing with. Where things get real interesting, though, is once the once we get into high load transfers and all of a sudden we break traction. Now, in this situation, you now go into oversteer city like you wouldn't believe. And this particular um, plot is from the, uh, this particular plot is from Chassis Sim Driver in the Loop. And the reason I've taken it from Chassis Sim Driver in the Loop is that it uh, is that with Driver in the Loop, we can log a few variables that would be very, very difficult to log on an actual car. So let's go through it. So here we've got a situation where we've broken um, traction. Here was me just being a bit silly doing spin testing. But if we take a look all the way down here, take a look at what's go uh, at, if we take a look at what's going on here, take a look at what's happening with our slip ratio. So, so our slip ratios, we've just broken traction left and right. Now, here is where things get now here's where things get real interesting. Not only do we have a differential force from the outside wheel, the fact that the outside wheel is now kicking you around more than what the inside wheel is, but if we take a look at what um, the lateral forces, what um, the lateral forces are doing, because the slip ratios have now broken traction, what's happening is it's is it's prior uh, is it um, prioritizing the longitudinal force over the lateral force. So if we take a look, so this is a car with a 50-50 um, weight distribution, and what we can see here is that we've got a combined lateral force of 1,200 kilos, but because we are now driving the diff, breaking traction. That has now greatly reduced the available lateral force. So consequently, with the lock diff, all of a sudden it's got, we've broken traction and it's now doing this. So, um, hang on, let me just show you to, uh, a show from this angle. So we're going, uh, 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 and all of a sudden, boom, that we're doing that. And understanding that between the fact that the lock diff very much has Jekyll and Hyde behavior, is a really good primer to understanding the LSD. Okay, so getting to the, getting to the limited slip differential. Now, um, these were figures from, from uh, Godola, which I'll leave the references at the end of this presentation. But effectively, the LSD is effectively an open diff. As you can see, the fact that um, it's, uh, as you can see down here, we've got our bevels here, but it's got, but it's got clutch packs that's driven by these ramps. So effectively, the LSD starts its life with when it's free welding or it's got zero um, input torque, it's effectively the open diff. But as we apply an import force, what happens is the clutch packs here get locked up. And as they get locked up, what we have is that starts to, that starts to distribute a differential force. Now, here's where things get interesting. Okay, so if we go through, and this has come um, from uh, reference paper two, if we actually do the fundamental equations of what the LSD looks like, and um, this, I'm actually going to go into much further detail about this in a forthcoming race car engineering article, where I will actually go into a bit more depth about the whys and wherefores of this. But when you do the maths, what happens is that the torque that you're applying to the tires is effectively the torque on each side of these stub axles. Now, Here's where things get really interesting. The differential torque that's being applied by the clutch packs is effectively the differential torque on the tire. So that, uh, so if you remember the or the, the, the first tutorial that we discussed, we talked about differential tuning. Up until you hit post all, everything in there applies. But the question remains: What happens when we break traction? When we break traction, what's going to happen here? is that the angular velocity of our differential torque now goes to zero because what's happening now is that our what's happening now is the differential forces available from the tire can no longer can no longer move the diff so the angular velocity goes to zero so that means 
the LSD, when it goes postal, turns into the lock diff. That, and in particular, in that um, forthcoming article in Race Car Engineering, I go into a little bit of more of the whys and the wherefores of that. But once you understand that, and once you can comprehend what that means, then it, then it's a real light bulb moment for you. So let's take a look at some DAL testing with um, LSD. And again, the reason I'm showing driver in the loop testing is again, just showing you the fact that the data variables are a lot easier to log on drive in the loop than they would be on an actual car. But as we take a look here, this was doing some uh, postal training. This was for a GT3 car. And as you can tell, I was being a bit stupid. So I locked it in first gear and I really rammed on the throttle. But let's take a look at what's actually going on here. If we take a look at the slip ratios here, we break in traction and now the slip ratios have gone silly. Um, the rear left has gone, this is a this is a right-hand turn. So the, the rear left is like 60%. And, um, the right rear is is forty percent, and as we can see, uh, uh, and um, as you can see, the effect that it uh, the effect that it's going uh, I mean the effect that it's going to um, on the lateral forces is pretty much they drop off to nothing. So in addition to getting a big steering torque that now is going to do like this, is the fact that now you've got limited traction available at the rear, so it's just going to go. So um, that is pretty much what, you, uh, what you're going to be dealing with. That being said, the advantage that the LSD gives you is that unlike the lock diff where it's understeer, understeer, brake traction, woohoo, we've done that. At least with the LSD, it's a little bit more progressive. Now, backing up a little bit to the lock diff, here's where you've got to be, uh, to the lock diff, Here's where you've got to be a lot, the, this is where you've got to, um, this is where a big differential comes between rear wheel drive and front wheel drive. With rear wheel drive, you can be pretty much a little bit gun ho in terms of how you lock the diff, how you set up the ramps, et cetera, et cetera. And so there, you've got a bit of, you've got a bit of wiggle room because even in those lowest, in those, uh, in those low speed corners, when you're going like this, What's going to happen is that, you know, if you lock up the differential a little bit too much, if truth be told, it's not going to be the end of the world because the driver can effectively get on the throttle and basically spin, um, spin you around those uh, tricky low, low speed dumb corners. Front wheel drive. That's a whole different ball game. The reason is, if we go back to our uh, picture, it, it, we go back to our post slip picture here with the lock diff, take a look at what, take a look at if those are reversed. If those are reversed now, rather than getting that effect because the lateral, uh, because the front lateral forces are doing this, while we've taken away lateral force um, from uh, the tractor tires, in front wheel drive, what's happening is that yes, we get a bit of a differential torque, which is great, but it's very much counteracted by the fact we've lost lateral force. And that folks is why with front wheel drive, you've got to be so much fussier about how you set up the diff than what you do with rear wheel drive. And that's a very, very important thing um, to, uh, that's a very important thing to understand. Um, let me just summarize that for you there so that as you go through this tutorial, you can just do it. Let me just be quiet for a moment or two so you can hit the pause button. Okay, so to sum up, again, the diff is such a critical setup variable. But once you understand both the lock diff and the way the LSD works, a lot of it will come into uh, 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 a lot. A lot of it will come into um, place. And remember, the LSD starts as an open diff, but then progresses to the lock diff. Once you get that through your head, then you go ah. Oh. And that for me, you know, particularly as I was doing a deep dive with some oddities I was finding with uh, chassis driver in the loop. Once I understood that, I was like. Oh, that's why it's doing that. And then once you do that, then you can really get on top of tuning the LSD. So that'll do it this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. I'm going to leave those paper ref uh, those references um, for you because they're great papers to read and to help you get your head around, uh, around the LSD. And we will catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.